Доброго вечора, ми з України. Hello friends and welcome back to Shanka Show. I'm your host Sergey Sputnikov and I was born in the USSR. So recently I posted a picture on my community page on YouTube. This photo of my mom while she was visiting us back in 2005. If you read my book American Diaries 1995, you'd know that working at a tremendous food farm was a big part of my adventure, a big part of my story. So we went and visited Herb and his wife. Herb passed away now. And so my mother kind of saw where I worked, where I lived. And so that was pretty cool. And that's several pictures that I took there. And one time Herb invited us for, to have a breakfast together at the local diner here in Beeren Springs called Hoppers. It's just a small family outfit. And it was a hilarious part because when we ordered breakfast and, you know, they brought bacon, fried eggs, hash browns. My mom looked at me in shock and she's like, why do we eat this food here? I could cook exactly the same thing at home. And I had a really good laugh because for her it was just a waste of money to go somewhere and pay to eat just basic food that can be cooked at home. You know, she's just like, no, oh, that's just Americans and don't worry about it. Herb is paying for it, so we're good. But yeah, she, she was really shocked. And of course, my mom and my wife cooked together in the kitchen. My mom was showing her how to make, you know, the dishes from old country like vareniki, which called here pierogi, you know, how to cook borscht. So since my wife really enjoys cooking, they enjoyed spending time together in the kitchen. So quite often, you know, mother and daughter-in-law, they usually uh, clash in the kitchen. We also had a small box garden. Originally, it's kind of funny when we I purchased that house back in 2000 and it had a nice size lot. I was so thrilled to have a like real big garden like back in the village because we had a quite a large garden that 0.4. Uh, Hector. So I hired a guy who came with a tractor and plow and he plowed nicely the field and I planted uh, corn and I planted uh, cucumbers, you know, and sunflowers and I was so excited when the first, you know, things came up, first greens came up from the ground and then one morning I went outside and everything was mowed down, everything was gone because my house and the property was right kind of like on the banks of a river so there was this wooded ravine which was uh, just teamed with wildlife including deer rabbits woodchucks and i didn't realize that it's a big deal here in america because back in ukraine there's no issue with animals destroying your gardens because there's no wild animals and that's when i started disliking deers because i always thought they're such animal beautiful animals but yeah they they were destroying everything, so I was slowly retreating. In the end, I ended up with a small box garden. So we built boxes, and then I put the fence, and still deer was hopping over the fence, woodchucks were digging under the fence, and rabbits were squeezing any hole they could find. So there was big garden war every year. But my mom liked to be in the garden, so she would go there and you know, weed and uh, take care of the things, water. So that was her kind of nice thing to spend time. And of course we went uh, shopping together because I wanted to see American supermarkets and one time we were in Walmart and it was this awkward moment because so we were looking at things and suddenly my mom see this large black lady riding this electric shopping cart scooter and she was so shocked like she covered uh, her mouth with one hand it was pointing with her finger at the lady and looking at me I was like mom stop doing this. And I took a short vacation and we went all together, the whole family up north. We stayed in Traverse City at the Grave Tooth Lodge. It's a, like an indoor water park. And I don't think my mom really enjoyed that. She preferred to stay in the room. She didn't really like to do the, all the water slides and stuff. But and So that was like a small trip up north. And I think it's just my mom, she really didn't handle well alone driving. You know, Americans just do it all the time, so they even don't notice about it. We don't travel a lot, and mostly by train, so riding even in the car, well, in the minivan, uh, she just, she was getting tired really quickly. And one time we traveled to see Amish, and once again, if you read my book, American Diaries 1985, I went to Amish country every Monday night when I work at the farm in the fall of 1995, of course, in 96 and 97, 98. So I thought it would be interesting for mom to see that interesting situation when in modern country, 
you have people who still use horses and you know live this old-fashioned lifestyle and of course my mom grew up pretty much in the amish lifestyle environment they used horses to plow their field and the only modern conveniences uh, she had when she was a kid elect was electricity otherwise outhouse no running water getting water out of the well keeping food in a cellar so yeah she she wasn't like impressed with that but it was kind of interesting that she, when we saw it together this month flew by uh, really fast and of course it was time to travel back to new york so my mom was already stressed out because you know it was another 12 hours being in the car so at that time i just kind of set up her on the back seat so she could pretty much like lay down and just relax and i was driving so yeah we were talking a lot on the way back to new york and generally my mom was really overwhelmed that's pretty much you know if you imagine just taking someone out of like alaska middle of nowhere and bring them to new york or you no know, make it worse bring like to rome or some other european city that you don't understand language so it was just really overwhelming for my mother you know she's almost 60 and suddenly she's in a different country then no one speaks uh, russian or ukrainian we actually introduced her to some local and people like this Armenian couple that I met. So my mom was hanging out with them for a while. But yeah, she was just so overwhelmed that they generally like asking her about what do you think about America? She's just like, with like, you know, blinking her eyes. She couldn't say anything good or bad because it's just way too much to process. But of course, the most important message that my mom told me, she said, I don't worry about you anymore. That's what her uh, parting words. So I felt better because for years, you know, her son is across the ocean. She doesn't know what's going on. And when she stayed with us and saw how my lifestyle going, she basically said that was the most important message for me. I don't worry about you anymore. Just by chance, and it's really bizarre coincidence, but we arrived to New York. My mom's flight was on June 18, 2005. I arrived to New York on June 18, 1995. So I was back in New York on the same day 10 years later, uh, you know, helping my mom to fly back. And when it clicked, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it's, uh, you know, same date, uh, just 10 years later. Uh, but a lot of things changed in New York since then. Uh, I We took mom around downtown New York, and at that time, World Trade Center was gone. It was just this giant construction site, so my mom I looked at it, it was really sad because in 1995, I went on the top of those uh, Twin Towers. So yeah, we kind of explored New York, we took the ferry, that's where the picture of her was the Statue of Liberty in the background. Had some meal, and actually I met a friend of mine that also used to go in class, went to school with me together, Andre, and he moved to New York. So we met there and he kind of took us around. So yeah, my mom, I think my mom enjoyed New York a lot and she was probably happy that it's time to go. Later that she told me that she didn't feel really good on the flight. So that long 12 hour drive really kind of got her tired. We stayed again overnight with my friends in New Jersey, but it's just for her, she's just not used to traveling that much. So on the flight, she said she really thought she might die. I don't know how it was for real, it just, she felt that way, but she was asking flight attendants just let her stand somewhere because she just couldn't sit for so long. So she really got kind of spooked on that flight and she didn't want to do it again. So that was her only visit and my father even didn't want to try to travel. So that was the only time when my mom visited and they said she never wanted to come back, which kind of reminds me, I had a similar situation with a friend of mine, so Alex, so once again, if you read my book, He's the guy who actually found this exchange program, CCUSA, and told me about it. That's how its whole mess started. Uh, but he's the only son in his family, and mother is just, uh, his father passed away in the 90s. So mom is living by herself in Kiev. So they started talking, hey, how about you move over here, you know, and stay with us because she's in her 80s. So uh, she came to the United States and she stayed in Minneapolis with uh, my friend's family. And he didn't marry American. He married actually a girl whose parents uh, came with her from Belarus. So they're Russian speaking. So they all speak Russian in the house. And she stayed maybe six months, maybe even less. She planned to move in. But after 
this three or six months she stayed with her son and his family. She said, nope, I'm going back to Kiev. She preferred to be by herself in her apartment in Kiev than live in the same house with his son. So it kind of tells you just these older people, older generation, they can, most of them can't really handle this giant change, you know, coming to different country and staying here. And if you follow my channel, you know that in the end, my mom actually ended up moving back to the village that she came originally. I helped her to buy a house and she's a happy camper now. She has her own garden. She likes to stay busy. She doesn't want to have TV. And uh, my brother just told me recently that she had the best crop of tomatoes, beans, and potatoes in the whole village. Somehow other people had poor crop. So my mom made a decent amount of money selling her tomatoes and beans, and she actually had extra potatoes that she also sold. So she was really proud with the achievement. But she spends every day in the garden, weeding, watering, taking care of it. She said, like, I don't lay on the couch and watch TV. I like to stay busy. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story of my mom staying with us back in the May, June of 2005. I said it was, uh, at least she saw America, experienced Niagara Falls, saw New York City, so that was probably the biggest adventure of her life. But uh, it was good enough for her to decide not to come back. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hello, my name is Krista Jerish, I'm from Lebanon. Good morning, my name is Jack Jonathan. My name is Sarah Lebanon, I'm from Jerusalem. Good morning, my name is Alan Moore, I'm from Lebanon. Good morning. Hi, my name is Tommy Hal, I'm from Bogier. <coughs> Hello, my name is Miguelina Fuentes and I'm from Mexico. Hi, my name is Rosa Lumerovich, I'm from Bosnia. Hi, my name is Andrea Bolotovic, I'm from Bosnia. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maya Diaz and I am from Bosnia. Hi, my name is Fatima Kenny. I am from Bosnia. Hi, my name is Benjamin Kenny. I am from Bosnia. My name is Dino Jankovic and I am from Bosnia. Hi, my name is Benedict and I am from Bosnia. My name is Linda Cloud, and I'm from Canada, and I can vote! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Maricela Pascual, and I'm from Mexico. My name is Aline Peterson, and I'm from Latvia, and I have waited years to become a citizen. <laughs> and I'm proud today to become a citizen with tears to my eyes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sergey uh, wrote a book based on diaries he made when he was first in the United States. And I, as I understand, this is just volume one, right? That's good. He's going to have more, multiple volumes coming out. Well, I said, well, since uh, Sergey is kind enough to come up and speak with us, I bought the book. I said, I might as well read this. I read this in one sitting, two hours, two and a half hours. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating because uh, your writing is very compelling for one. And his story is very interesting for two. It's really interesting. You know, we've lived here our whole lives. We don't have that perspective. It's just so interesting to hear someone else's perspective about what we take for granted. So I hope you really tune in and, and listen to what he has to say. It's a very interesting, very informed perspective. Sergey is not a historian. He's an electrical engineer by trade, but I find that he has a depth of understanding on history, economics, culture. So just a, just a very observant fellow and a, a great storyteller. So. Uh, like